CP the franchise. NBA analyst, Knicks fan TV. Okay, CP. Um, you want to split an Uber to Barclays or what? What do you. <laughs> <laughs> Win or lose, Max, I'm always here, always representing so that means the lose. orange and blue, never running from the smoke. Never right, so that means lose. Smoke. If it's win or lose, you're always there, and you're a Knicks fan. It means lose, lose or lose, lose. Well, I'm always here. <laughs> Just say lose. Four to one. We lost to a better team in the Hawks. Coach team and Nate with Nick McMillan. Congratulations to him. Contract extension on the way. Yeah. Uh, Trey Young was absolutely fantastic. Twenty nine and ten in this series. We had no answer for him. You know he was yeah. a triple threat from the floater to kicking it out to his three point shooters, the lob to Capella. We just had no answers defensively. Uh, they were able to take away our guy, who was Julius Randle. And the Knicks had to settle for too many isolation plays. We didn't get enough ball movement going. Couldn't hit our open shots. And there was no consistent help from our, our supporting cast. And uh, just all in all, you know, I just thought the Hawks were a better team in, in this they series. They were. They were. And the Knicks are. Here's the problem I have, CP, with Knicks fans. And yeah. I used to be one. Yeah. Is, oh, it's a successful so, uh, season. Because we showed the, the you know, we can, we Ran, Julius Randle even said it. He's miscast as a number one option. He, he's, yeah. an, oh, he's, a, he's a solid number two option. But if you're a really good team, he's, your, he's good as a number three option, right? So I get Correct. it. It's a, you know, and, and he's right. They played with a, uh, in, a, in a way that New York can be proud of, the style of play. But this is my point. Yeah. Knicks fans have been so desensitized to sucking for so long. I'm in my 48th year. They still haven't won a championship. That that moral victories are now, hey, at least we didn't roll over, even in a gentleman's sweep. At least we played hard. So, so now, CP, the Knicks are up to this point. Like, the Nets showed a healthy culture. They weren't in New York for 48 years. They showed up a couple years later. Okay, this is a good place to play. You could, it's easy to sell New York. KD, Kyrie, and James Harden, right? The Knicks are now hoping, hey, have we shown enough that maybe a guy like, say, Bradley Beal, who be our best player by a million light years and who's not nearly good enough to be the best player on a championship team, and I love Bradley Beal, maybe a guy like that might sign with us. And then you know what you are? You're on a, you're hoping to get to a second-round treadmill where not bad enough to get a great draft pick, not good enough to win a championship. This was my life as a Knicks fan. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Look at you. Here you're in that you I'm trying to help you no you can't help me because there's nothing in brooklyn for me and this is you moving the goal post as you always do every single show despite that it is a successful season you wanted tom thibodeau to come in here and lay the foundation and lay the culture down for years to come and he's done that he doubled their win total from last year he's done that with with david fisdale's team yet julius randall the most improved player okay they have a young core, R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly. Now it's time to continue to build. Now they have seven draft picks within the next first round picks within the next five years. Sixty million dollars in cap space. It's not to say, you know, this is not going to come here next year. Let's be real. Kawhi Leonard's not coming here. They're not going to be able to trade for Dame. What they need to do is continue to build responsibly and using a prudent approach. A la the Utah Jazz. Build it as a small market team continue to draft well, and then when the opportunity presents itself to make a Nets move to, to trade some of your assets right. off and get a player that Could can help like you get you over the hump, CP then you go the for franchise, it. NBA analyst, Knicks fan TV on the Goodyear hotline. CP is capable of much more, <laughs> thankfully for him, than talking about the Knicks. But I want to, but before we like get off the subject, CP. Yeah. The Nets did that quick, fast, in a hurry. By the way, you know the last New York professional basketball team to win a championship was the Nets? Yeah. The last New sure. York team, they were the New York Nets, 76. Dr. J, who's from here, who's from your yeah. neck of the woods, right? Dr. That's J, a, a New Yorker, born and bred, won for yeah. the New York Nets in the ABA, right? That happened. That's the last New York championship. Then the Nets went to Jersey, like the Giants and right. the Jets did, right? But then yeah. they came back to Brooklyn. A couple of years later, after being in Brooklyn like that, they get KD, Kyrie, and James Harden. Now, here's the problem for you Knicks fans, okay? Yeah. Knicks have no equity, equity with fans. They were just the only game in town for, for decades and decades and decades. Lakers fans, oh, 11 championships in the modern era. Oh, it's almost twice as much as the next best team. Lakers fans, Clippers can win a couple championships. It's never going to be a Clippers town. They can only hope to make a little inroads. But this town, CP, you're about to see that if the Nets get by the Bucks, New York's going to flip, CP. Why would the no. fans stick with the Knicks? What have the Knicks ever done for the no. fans? 
because the Knicks fan is the most loyal fan in sports. And maybe to a fault. You're not going to have fans bolting like over the Brooklyn just dog. because they won. Knicks fans you'll, are like abused, get... like an abused pet. They love the owner <laughs> anyway, and they get they Listen. get beaten, and it's no good. Listen, we have a new regime putting us on the right path. Okay. In Brooklyn, you'll get a couple regime, hipsters, yeah. a couple techies in the new Brooklyn that'll, that'll <laughs> flock over to the Nets. But mm-hmm. listen, the diehard Knicks fan, I was just out there at MSG last Wednesday night, spilt out onto 7th Avenue after the mm-hmm. game to win the first victory in eight years. And it was like championship. Why? Because the loyalty, Max, the loyalty, the tried and true orange and blue fans. We had thousands of fans out there in the streets celebrating. It was like a scene out of the movie Project X. Yes. No, you know what it's, it's like? going to happen in Brooklyn. It's, it's never like, going to happen. It's like the character from Lord of the Rings, Reek. That's what it's like. You've been, <laughs> you guys have been slayed alive, and now you're like slaves to Jim Dolan. All right, listen, CP, I want to talk about other yeah. stuff going on in the NBA with you. You know, it, it, it breaks my heart for Denver that Jamal Murray's not there. They have a very yeah. deep guard rotation, and they've been excellent without Jamal Murray. And I think they're going to beat Portland, and I think they have a shot against a team like Utah even. Uh, um, but they don't have Jamal Murray, right? And so when you look at Denver and you look at Utah, right? Let's take the teams no one cares about, and then we're going to get to the Lakers and the Clippers and stuff. Yeah. Do you think Denver has a chance to not only get by Portland, but to maybe upset Utah if they meet? No, I just, I just see this Jazz team as being too deep. When you look at the spider, welcome back, you know, uh, Donovan Mitchell, because he's been back like he hasn't missed a step. You have the Stifle Tower down low, offensively, defensively. You have the sixth man of the year in in, uh, in Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench, Joe Ingles. There's a lot of firepower on that Jazz team that I just don't think the Nuggets have enough defensively to counter. Now, on the flip side, on offense, everything runs through Jokic. We know that. Um Austin Rivers, Knicks missed him in this series. Playoff he's Rivers. Been a, it's like playoff, <laughs> playoff Rondo. Rivers. Austin Rivers yeah. can't play basketball until it counts, and then he's a killer. Yeah, yeah. Playoff, playoff Rivers has certainly arrived. Porter Jr. having an outstanding season, but I just don't think defensively they'll have enough okay. uh, to counter the Jazz attack. No. They'll have enough to get past Dame and the Blazers and, and probably eliminate them tonight, but I think uh, I don't th- see them getting past Utah in the next round. What about Kawhi and Paul George against Luka? Doncic, Luka Doncic, just 42, 14, and 8 on the road in a win. Good Lord, this dude, 22 years old. Can the Clippers come back from that? They can, but the Mavs have momentum right now, man. I mean, 22 years old on a bad neck. The kid turns it around with a 42 and 14 performance with eight rebounds, 30, accounting for 31 of the team's 37 field goals. Third Sick. game with at least 39 or more. The kid's been absolutely unstoppable. He flamed Patrick Beverly. He's flaming Rondo. He's flaming Reggie Jackson. I mean, the Clippers literally have no answer for the kid. And so despite the fact that he's doing a lot with a little, I think this this Mavericks team having won three games on the road, they have to be feeling good about themselves going back to Dallas and hoping to close it out. Do the Lakers, I, I was just talking about it, you know, CP3, the people are like, you know why I didn't know about CP3 shoulder even that night? Because I didn't watch the second half of that, 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 you know, travesty. I was watching yeah. Denver and Portland. Next morning, I find out from a producer of mine in the morning, like, you see what happened to CP3 shoulder? And I went and looked. I was like, oh, my God, he's compromised. No one's really talking about it. Everyone's focused on AD. Doesn't that give the Lakers a chance to extend this series to seven games, you know, winning at home. What do you think of their chances? Well, what concerned me, Max, was that the Lakers what just wasn't there, especially in game in uh, in game five. Now with AD, I don't think he's going to go. I'm no medical expert. I don't think he's going to go, and that's going to take a lot away from the Lakers because now you're asking for LeBron James at 36 years old to put the team on his back, and not only that, create through dribble penetration and not just on the perimeter. You got absolutely nothing from Dennis Schroeder. Kuzma, who you're going to need to step up, has been inconsistent. Uh, they just have no answers offensively. They're shooting very poorly in this series. Um, the Suns on the other end, what surprised me in the Suns' three wins in this series is, is that they didn't shoot any greater than 35% from three. And so they're getting a mixed bag of offense, obviously from Booker. ayton has been dominant, but they're able to mix it up. Payne has been great off of the bench. They're able to attack the, the Lakers in the paint, and they're getting a lot of mid-range shots off. So I think Chris Paul will be a good uh, decoy for them, but I still think the Suns will have enough to put the Lakers away tonight. I Well, the Lakers are not the Knicks. They usually come through. Now listen, CP, before I let you go, <laughs> and you have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. 
are you, because I'm a Yankees fan, Yankees get yeah. knocked out. I root against the Mets. I hate the Mets, right? I'm a New York yeah. sports fan. You have to hate the other team. But Brooklyn Nets, Brooklyn Nets, Brooklyn Nets, New York's basketball team still playing basketball. They're playing the Bucks. Who are you rooting for in that series? The owner of the Bucks, Larry Edens, was a diehard Knicks fan. I am sticking with him. And Greek freak I trust, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. You're Let's get it. against the Brooklyn sleep. Nets. Do not sleep on okay. Bryn Forbes. Okay. I yeah. like this well balanced attack of the Milwaukee I, I Bucks. I agree. You the can't freak sleep on Bryn Forbes. He's coming to put a statement out there. You also can't sleep on Kevin Durant, but you can't sleep on Bryn Forbes. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. KD also you can't sleep on. Or Harden. Kyrie's pretty good too. All right. CP the franchise. Um, I can't. You're, you're rooting against Brooklyn. Look at that, everybody. Always. A real tra- a New Always. York traitor. Look at that traitor. Yeah, a Turn real Knicks fan. A real Knicks fan. Thank you, CP. I'll talk yeah. to you next week. Thanks again. CP the franchise, ladies and gentlemen.